Good. All right. All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. So we are the AGU Public Information Office, and we're here to talk to you guys about how to pitch us press events um, for the fall meeting this year. So um, who's talking to you today? Um, I'm Lauren LaPuma. I'm a, one of the public information specialists. Um, I'm also here with Nancy Bompi, who's the manager of the public information department, and Liza Lester, who's the other public information specialist. So just a brief outline of what we're going to cover today. So we're going to first give you a little background, um, brief overview of the fall meeting itself and about the press operation at the meeting. Then we're going to talk about the types of press events that we hold at the meeting and then what we're looking for in a pitch from all of you guys, um, show you how to search for presentations from researchers at your institution, and then give you some tips for success um, for crafting your pitch. Then show you some examples of past press events we've done and past pitches we've received um, to give you a better idea of what we're looking for and then um, talk about what comes next and then leave time for a Q&A. So to get started, um, I'll just give you a brief overview about the fall meeting. So the fall, our ATU fall meeting is the largest yearly gathering of Earth and Space scientists. It is huge. We regularly get more than 20,000 attendees. Um, we usually have more than 1,800 or so sessions. Um, this year, we've you know hit a pretty big record. We're at more than 26,000 abstracts submitted so far. So it's huge. It's a behemoth. It's overwhelming. It's just a massive, massive meeting. It takes place over five full days um, from Monday through Friday. This year, it's December 10th through 14th right here in Washington, D.C. So this, the meeting is scientific program is organized around 26 scientific disciplines, and these cover all areas of Earth and space science. Um, so everything from atmospheric science to ocean science, natural hazards, planetary science, space physics, um, and climate, things like that. So those are the main disciplines that the meeting is organized around, but they also have keynote lectures, which are very general, union and town hall sessions, which kind of cross in between those disciplines, go across borders. And there are also sessions on science education and um, public affairs, public policy, that kind of thing. So the majority, about two thirds of the presentations that are given are all poster presentations, and about a third of them are actual oral presentations. So the press operation at fall meeting is pretty large. Um, we regularly get about 250 or more members of the media attending. And these are everyone from reporters, you know, staff reporters, freelancers. We have science bloggers come, um, science podcasters, public information officers like yourselves, authors, filmmakers, photo and video journalists, and even sometimes journalism students and educators will attend as well. And so um, myself and Nancy and Liza as the public information office, you know, we um, put together a series of press events at the meeting to you know, help reporters cover the science that's being presented and to really highlight the, the new research that's going on. So what we do is we put together three types of press events at the meeting. The majority of those are press conferences. And press conferences, the point of those is really to break research news. So during a press conference, a small panel of scientists and researchers um, present new research results that they're presenting at the meeting. And the purpose is to break, uh, break news. We also do a couple workshops, and workshops are a little bit different. They're meant more to give reporters a background um, on an upcoming mission or a project that might be in the news in the next you know, six months or year. That's something that's coming up. Um, so it's more just to provide background. It's not really to, to break news or talk about new research. We also do several media availabilities where you know prominent scientists or agency heads or people who are very involved in Earth and space science are available just for question and answer session with reporters. So just to give you guys an idea of where we're coming from, you know, as the public information office at HU, our focus is really to highlight the research at the meeting, to get it covered in the media. So, so we're just trying to disseminate all that research news that's going on. So the majority of the events that we do are press conferences. And so the press conferences we put together are, you know, they're going to be the ones that are breaking the biggest research news of the meeting, and they're going to appeal to the widest possible audience. So, you know, we have reporters coming from all over the country, from all different types of outlets. And we want our press conferences to appeal to the widest uh, variety, on, variety of them. Anyone, someone coming from the Associated Press all the way down to, you know, a, a science-specific audience like Science News. And so we go through, um, we search through all the presentations that are being given at, at the meeting ahead of time, and we plan these series of press conferences, but we also reach out to all of you guys for help. Um, we take pictures from you because it's just, there's just so much science that's being covered, and we just can't get to all of it. 
So what we're looking for um, in a pitch for a press conference is really research that is going to stand out. Remember, there are more than 26,000 presentations going on at this meeting. So anything that has to, that makes it to the level of a press conference really has to stand out in some way. You know, so all the general criteria that you think about for something being newsworthy really have to apply here. It has to be new, timely, significant, um, maybe it's odd or unusual in some way, might have a human interest element. Superlatives are always great, you know, a discovery of the first or the best, the longest, the oldest of something. Um, and we really want press conferences that cover a wide range of topics. You know, at AGU, um, we do a lot of climate research, a lot of planetary science, and those always do really well in the media, but um, we really want our press conferences to cover the whole breadth of AGU sciences, not just those two topic areas. So here's just a, a handy guide we've put together to, you know, help assist you in deciding what science is newsworthy when you start to look through presentations from researchers at your institution. You know, make sure that it's something that's new, previously unknown, um, might have a represent a significant advancement to the field, impact our daily lives, relate to current events, might be something unexpected, cool, or eye-catching, um, might go against the current scientific consensus, and especially something that has a multimedia element, so a striking photographs, videos, audio, anything like that is always a, a really good, good choice. So when we um, ask for pitches, um, you know, we're going to ask for a lot of information from you all. Um, we really want to get as much detail as possible. So we're going to ask you to write a pretty detailed description of the event, a couple paragraphs, um, what the main new research findings are. And we really want you to be specific. We want to know um, exactly what the results are that they're going to present and how they're new. So definitely interview scientists um, ahead of time. Um, again, don't promise them any publicity. You know, just tell them that you are, you know, putting forth a proposal. Um, but interview them as if you're going to write a press release about it. Um, you know, find out what the, the net nugget of news is. You know, find out what their results are and be specific. If you have numbers, that is really helpful. So, you know, if um, a scientist is studying a particular glacier in Antarctica and they're saying their new result is that that glacier has been, you know, melting much more rapidly over the past 10 years than it has in the past, well, we want to know how much more rapidly, you know, what is that change that ha that is different than what was already known. Any numbers you can assign to are, are great. Now, sometimes we know that scientists submit abstracts to the meeting before they've analyzed their data, so they may not always have those numbers yet by the time you submit your proposal. And if that's the case, that's okay. Um, just, you know, make a note of that, and then we'll know to come back to you or follow up with you, you know, once the scientist has started crunching the numbers and has a little bit of that data ready. But you can also give us a hint of what those numbers might be um, beforehand. Um, and then, again, we want to know why these findings are newsworthy. Why should we care? You know, why does this particular um, area of research, you know, rise to the level of a press conference at our meeting. Um, and what's new compared to what is already known? You know, a lot of times scientists, scientists come to our meeting every year and they present every year. So, you know, they might come a couple years in a row and they may not really have much that is new compared to what they presented last year. Um, but if they do have something new this year, that's what we want to know, you know, what's new compared to what, what happened before. Um, and we also really need to know if the findings have already been um, presented by the scientists or published in a, in a journal or submitted to a journal, if they've been publicized by your institution already through a press release or some other means, and if they've already been reported on by the media. You know, this will also all help us determine, you know, what is the most new science that's coming out of our meeting. Um, you know, the Geological Society of America meeting is in early November, so it's about a month before our meeting, and a lot of scientists will submit the same abstract to the GSA meeting and to our meeting. And they may present it at GSA and it may get a lot of media coverage. So by that, by the time they present it at our meeting, it might be old news. So that's just something we have to take into account and something that uh, you should really find out from the scientists ahead of time. So how to find presentations from researchers at your institution. So I'm gonna um, get out of this little slideshow here and I'm gonna actually show you how to search for presentations. So there's a link um, in this, um, slideshow and also in an email that we'll send to all of you guys that links to this um, internal like database of abstracts called the PIO abstract search. This is a preliminary fall meeting program. So what you'll do is you'll go to this link up here and you'll scroll down. This is just some general information about the search itself. Um, and you'll see here is where you can search by many different you know categories. You can search by the author's name, the presenter's name, if it's different than the first author. Um, keyword, their institution, the ID number of the abstract, the session keyword, um, the section or focus group, which I'll talk about in just a second. 
So, for example, if you know I was a PIO at NASA and I wanted to find every single presentation that is happening at the meeting by a NASA scientist, I would go right here to first author, first author institution and I would type in NASA. So I hit enter and that'll search. And now this brings me 807 abstracts. So that's a lot. So you could look through each one of these individually. It'll, the search results page will show you um, all these abstracts. So if you click on the first, you click on the title, that'll take you to the actual text of the abstract. So it'll show you the first author, the presenter, the body of the abstract, um, the session, the session title, and all that information right there. Now, if you go back, so 800 is a lot of abstracts. If you don't necessarily want to look through all 800, you might want to narrow it down a little bit. You can modify your search even more. So if you modify your search, we'll go back there. So let's say I want to look at, you know, anyone who's presenting from NASA but has new results. So I could go to abstract keyword and also I could add in in quotes new results. And then I'll search again. And that gives me 13 results. Now I can look at these abstracts. So if I click on that first one here, that goes back to the abstract body. And if there's a plain language summary associated with the abstract, you'll see that here as well. Um, it will also show you information if, uh, about if the research has been previously published, if the, if the author or the submitter has entered that information into our system. So that'll show you right at the bottom here. So that's a good indicator of whether the, the results are new or not. Um, so you can also search by the scientific discipline that the present, if you're just going to look for a certain um, topic area. So if you're, you know, a PIO who only publicizes planetary science research, you can look for only planetary work or, and, and so on. So to search that way, what you'll do, let's go back. We'll go to a new search here. So the 26 scientific disciplines that the fall meeting is based around, um, I have a link to it in this um, in this presentation, and then also in an email we'll send out to all of you. But it's it's on our website, and it's right here, so you can see all all the different scientific se se sections is what they're called. Um, so you can see, you know, you can search for these specifically. So let's say we wanted to look for, you know, hydrology presentations. So I'd go back to my search, I scroll down. Let's look for any NASA scientist who's presenting on hydrology. So I'd go down to where it says section focus group, and I'll type in hydrology. And hit search. All right, now that it gives me 47 results. So now I can look through all of these, and that will narrow it down just a little bit. So that's how you use our search system. Um, everything's organized in pages, just like a Google search gives you 10 results per page. Um, so if you have any questions about this, you can always you know, email us, and we're happy to help. Now we'll go back into our presentation here. Um, and just a couple of reminders. This is a preliminary program. So these abstracts have been submitted, but they haven't been formally accepted yet. Um, so just keep that in mind. You know, they, some may be withdrawn, some may be not accepted. Um, so, and, and the timing has not been, the timing of the sessions has not been um, drawn out yet. So just remember that. Please don't share this program. Like we said, it's internal and it's preliminary. Um, and again, use keywords to help you search and narrow things down if, if that helps you out. All right, so now I'm going to hand it off to Nancy, and she's going to give you guys some tips for success. Hi. Um, I am Nancy Bompi. I'm the manager of the Public Information Department at AGU. So just wanted to go over specifically um, kind of what we're looking for in pitches um, in a little more detail. So um, for press conferences, we'll start with press conferences and some tips that we um, might help make a, a successful pitch. So as Lauren said, focus on the science and, you know, and have new results. So what we're really looking for here is new science. And when you keep that in mind, um, you know, in, in press conferences, that's what we're really trying to highlight. We're trying to highlight the new science that's being presented at the meeting. So um, we're really looking for new results that haven't been publicized, haven't been published. Um, and that would be, of course, newsworthy as well. So, so that's um, kind of think about what the story would be. What would a reporter write from this press conference? What's the headline? What's the lead? Think of it as though they're going to write a story from this press conference. Um, you know, some of our press conferences are just about a single study, you know, one big study that's coming out. Maybe you have two or three researchers talking about that particular study. Um, but there's also can be a panel where there's a few different maybe storylines, but each one of those should have 
kind of, um, you know, news associated with it, you know, a new result. So, if, for example, um, you know, we did a panel a couple of years ago about animals that are being affected by climate change. But each one of those presentations had new results that they were presenting on a particular animal and how they were figuring out how it was being affected by climate change. So, um, so uh, you know, each one had a story and, and reporters can either write, you know, one story or multiple stories. So just think about that when you're kind of craft your, your press conference pitches. Um, you know, work with other institutions. That's something that we definitely, um, you know, encourage and, and like to see. Um, so like I said, if you have a panel, even if you have a single study briefing or you have a panel, you know, sometimes it's a good idea. We like to maybe see, um, get an outside person to maybe comment on the study, um, get someone from another institution to be on the panel. Um, think about working with your colleagues at other institutions, you know, and, and, and kind of spreading the, the, the love around, the burden around, <laughs> um, you know, which is great. Um, and I guess that goes to the same thing about diversity. We want to see our panels be diverse, you know, whether it be institutions and, and, but also, you know, people from, you know, um, uh, in, in age and in gender and in, in where they're from, all, all these different things. Um, so think about that as you craft who you want to be on the panel. Um, and think about, of course, panelists who are good communicators, as we all know. Um, not everyone is a great communicator. Um, and the biggest name on the paper may not be, or on the abstract, may not be the best person to to speak about that. You know, we've had graduate students, we've had undergraduate students present um, on, on press conferences. Um, so think about that and who's going to really be the best representative. You know, it's a short, these are short presentations, they're five minutes, so it, generally in a press conference. So um, really have to get that, that across quickly. Um, and then, um, you know, think about, um, like we said, a panel that might be able to be connected by a certain theme that's, um, like, like I mentioned before. Um, and, you know, think outside of climate and planetary science. Of course, that, that is so much of what comes out of the meeting, and that's a lot of the newsworthy stuff. And there's no reason if you have a great planetary story or great climate story, you can't pitch it to us. But we get a lot of that. And, um, you know, we also want to, and we want to see, and I think we've heard from reporters that they want to see maybe some more real, like, hard earth science stuff. So if there's something in that realm that's quirky, different, um, you know, kind of outside of climate and planetary science, you know, we like, we definitely, um, that, that can help definitely uh, in things we want to see. Um, and if there are associated journal papers, like Lauren mentioned, let us know about any journal papers. We routinely work with science, nature, and other journals, even our own journals, obviously, to um, coordinate so we could um, have the journal paper, hopefully, if the timing works out, be published at the time of the press conference. And that really helps. That, that helps, um, you know, in, in getting coverage of the press conference. Um, and I think it helps also for us to, to understand also better, like, you know, we, we guarantee that there's going to be some really new good results there. Um, one thing also I wanted to mention was um, we have in some cases also done, um, you know, unveiled or had, had press conferences on reports that were not necessarily presented at the meeting. So if you have some um, scientists who are going to be at the meeting, but you know you have this big report coming out um, that or, or big um, – you know, even a big study, and, and you think, hey, maybe that might be something that we could do a press conference on, and they're kind of presenting that at the meeting, maybe not exactly, but still, they're going to be at the meeting. It's about it's about Earth and space science. You know, let us know about it, and that's something we can definitely work with you on. That you know, we want to promote science in any way we can, and I think that that's a it's a good venue for that since we have such a kind of captive audience. Um, as Lauren said, try to be general. Um, think about the widest audience. We want to promote this to you know reporters who are really reporting for the you know, kind of a general audience and, and, you know, reporters who report for more specific audiences, um, you know, they, they'll probably delve into those more maybe with the scientists one-on-one, -on -one, but the press conferences really are geared towards, um, you know, kind of a general, uh, more general audience. And then if you ever need, you know, if you're thinking about a panel or you have a couple abstracts that look good and, um, Maybe you're thinking of, oh, I need new people. I don't know, but I don't know. Who, I, don't, I need more people on this panel, but I don't know who would be good. Um, ask us. You know, we're looking through the abstracts, too. So we can help you connect, you know, so maybe something we've seen that might fit with it. Um, we're happy to help you find maybe some additional people that we know of that might be good for the panel. So um, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and then, um, you know, just to go over a little bit about workshops and media availabilities. So press conferences are our main venue for getting out research. Um, news at the meeting, I mean, the majority of the press events are press conferences, and that's what we really want to see. But we do do a couple, a handful of workshops and what we call media availabilities. 
So, um, but we only accept a few of these each year. So, um, you know, we do, um, so do think, of, you know, if you do want to pitch this one, pitch with one of these, you know, that we, there is kind of a less of a chance that we're going to probably accept it just because we do, we don't do a lot of these. But, um, you know, a workshop is basically, um, you know, background on a mi upcoming mission um, or on, you know, if, if there's going to be a big expedition coming up, you know, some sort of background information for reporters. Um, and the media availability, I mean, similarly, um, if there's something in the news, if there's a really big head of an agency talking, it's really just a Q&A with reporters. So, but it, like, say, for example, I mean, wildfires have been in the news. Say we don't end up having a wildfire press conference or no new results that they have. But we just think it would be helpful to have some of those experts available to reporters at the meeting in a more kind of formal setting. Um, we might do that. So um, just think about the bottom line, think about how reporter, it would be useful to reporters, what they might be able to walk away with from that. Um, so in terms of um, crafting your pitch, I think Lauren went over a little bit of this, but um, just uh, think about it like you're writing a news story, like you're writing a press conference. That's kind of how much... Um, we wanted to kind of jump out and hit us over the head with what the news is. Um, be as specific as you can. Like Lauren said, have concrete results, have some numbers in there. Um, you know, go interview the scientists or at least email them with, a, with, some, with like the questions that we ask and ask them to be as specific as possible. Um, don't promise them. I and mean, we do this all the time. We organize our own press conferences. We do press releases, obviously, all the time. We don't promise anything. You know, we're just saying we're just reaching out for some more information. I mean, but we do need that information. So if it's not there, we're going to come back to you and ask for it. And it would re it just helps really speed the process along if it's there in the first place. Like Lauren said, if, it, if the scientists don't know yet, put that in there, too. Like, they don't have the numbers yet, but they expect, you know, they expect to have them by whatever. Or they're seeing this kind of trend, and they don't have the exact numbers yet. Um, you know, we're not... We're not publishing this, but it really helps us to understand, you know, what the what the pitch is about. Um, if you're working with another institution, good to designate one person, perhaps as the point person, to avoid confusion. And you know, we really um, we're not going to accept pitches probably that have been already publicized by your institution. So if you've already written a press release on this exact and these exact results. We're not going to probably do a press conference at the meeting. But if you did a press release two years ago when the study started and now you have results, yeah, of course, that's still good. That's still good. Um, you still want it. But, but let us know that you did that just so we can have some background on, on how this, you know, how this happened um, or progressed. If it's been widely covered, if the new results have been widely covered by the mainstream media, we're probably not going to do a press conference either. But if it was just covered by like your local paper, yes, you know, that, that might be an option um, to do a press conference. Um, or if, it, if, if, you know, if it was covered by the media two years ago and you have like brand new results that are really a big step forward, not an incremental step, but a big step, the really big next step in this study, then yeah, that might be something we'd want to do. Um, you know, being published in a journal or presented at another meeting also does not necessarily disqualify a pitch. Um, sometimes they can be published in a smaller journal. No one picked it up. It didn't get any media attention. And so we'd still, um, you know, like to do something on it. Or it was presented at a meeting and, and even in one of our meetings last year and no one, you know, picked it up. So, so but let us know just so we're not caught off guard or surprised by that when it does come out. Um, and, you know, of course, um, if we do, you know, except the pitch, you know, there is, you know, um, we need to be kept abreast of anything. If the, if the author submits a paper, if a paper gets published, we need to know about that stuff because that could change what happens down the road. So just things to keep in mind. Um, so this is just one example of a pitch um, that we wanted to just go over just to show a good example of something that, you know, that was, that was, that was um, something that we might accept. So, um, this was a pitch that came to us that I think we did end up accepting, but then things didn't work out with the journal paper in the end, so I, we didn't ever get the press conference, but it's a really good example. So um, this is about mountaintop glaciers in Tibet. I mean, it's really, you can understand right from the description um, what this is about, that they're presenting, you know, new results, um, and that they're presenting that there's been this increase in temperature and precipitation. I mean, it's pretty obvious why why this is newsworthy, um, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of some of the first results um, showing that these glaciers are being affected by climate change. So um, in, if you delve into the pitch, you know, the, the, the person who pitched us this, you know, told us exactly, you know, what they're seeing. They're seeing the substantial warming since 1992, temperatures are rising faster at higher altitudes, 
and why it's happening, you know, this link that they're showing for the first time. I mean, they could have prevented perhaps more, more even more, if we had numbers here, that would be even better. If they knew how much temperatures were rising, how much um, warming was happening, how much these glaciers have, have retreated. All those numbers are things that, that would be great to have. Um, and why is it newsworthy? I mean, this is really showing this, you know, temperature rise and, and climate change affecting these really high peaks. Um, and also it's, it's um, you know, a lot of people depend on this for water, depend on these glaciers for water. So that makes it obviously really newsworthy. So this is just one example of a really good pitch that we wanted to show you. Um, and that's kind of a single study. And then this is the um, panel that I mentioned um, that we did a couple years ago that had four different studies. So this is another way to go. Um, if you don't have one that you think rises to that level of like this is the biggest news ever, you know, press conference level, it might be better to do a panel and, and get, you know, gather a couple really interesting research results that might fit nicely into a story. Um, so in this case, you know, these were these four different studies. But again, they all had, you know, real concrete results of what each of these um, studies had. So, and that's really what we were looking for. Um, and then this is just an example of a workshop we did a couple years ago um, preparing for the eclipse um, where scientists went over, you know, this was obviously like eight months before the eclipse, but what was going to happen? Um, they went over with them about covering the eclipse as a reporter, and they also went over, I think, um, you know, what the scientists are expecting to see from the eclipse, what they were going to be looking for. So this helped reporters who were going to eventually cover this story um, during the summer, and then it also helped them, you know, maybe if they were going to write a story in a few months about what scientists are looking for, you know, that kind of setup story to a big mission or a big event or a big, um, you know, campaign. A lot of, you know, you might write that kind of setup story that scientists are going out and doing this. So um, it can provide them with, with that kind of background information. So um, kind of just to go over what's next. So after you fill out, um, you know, that we have a proposal form that's all online that you should have a link to. Um, so you'll fill out that proposal form. There's also a Word doc that goes with it. And you will send that to us by the deadline, which is September 28th, if not before. Um, and also just to mention, you know, feel free to reach out to us as early as now if you have an idea before you want to go down that road of actually maybe talking to the scientists and everything, um, but you have an idea just to reach out and see if that would be something that we might be, might be interested in. Um, we're happy to chat um, and let you know what we might, you know, what we might be looking for a little bit in a little bit more detail. But um, so after the deadline, we um, we start reviewing all the pitches we have to see what we you know what we have. We discuss them and then expect to hear back from us in a week or two weeks after that. Um, either asking for more information or to say yes, you know we liked your pitch. Um, and then once we accept it, um, the next steps will be that what you'll be responsible for is scheduling. Um, by that time, early October is when the final scientific program comes out. So your scientists should know what day they're presenting on, when the session is, when their talks are, or their posters are, um, maybe what days they'll be there at the meeting. So you can start scheduling what may be the best time for everyone. Um, we'll start and then start preparing the scientists for their presentations, you know, helping them with their slides if they need help, helping them with their presentations if they need help. Um, and then we do a webinar in November for everyone who's participating in a press conference for PIOs and scientists. So, um, and that goes over exactly what to put into all of this. So, and we have that past webinars, we have, um, you know, tip sheets. So we will provide all that to you once we accept your pitch so you can get started on helping them to craft that. Um, along with scheduling, it can be if there's a paper in the works, we also need to work with you and the journal to kind of figure that all out. So there could be a lot of logistics in trying to get this all set. Um, and then on site, if you're able to come to the meeting, you know, it's great to have you there if, if this was your press conference to really help, um, you know, with organizing the scientists, maybe doing a run through when you're there and helping with the on site logistics, getting their presentations to us, you know, making sure that everyone gets there on time and that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, that's. That's um, that's kind of kind of what to expect. I mean, once the pitch is accepted, there there is a little bit of stuff that you need to work with us on in getting you know until the press conference is, is all set. So, um, but if we don't accept your pitch, um, you know, there's still options. And like I said, we get a lot of pitches, and we only have so many slots, and we you know we can't accept every single pitch. Um, 
So and it's not always because you know, it, 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 a lot of times it could be it may be too specific than what we're looking for. We may have a lot of pitches in one area and we're looking for something else. So it's not anything, um, you know, it, it's just we have to manage all of this. Um, with with what we're with the time with the spaces the slots that we have so but if we don't accept your pitch there's still a lot of really good options for you to publicize that research um, you know you can write a press release um, you know that's a good way to go um, have your scientists be on call experts we have an expert database online during the meeting um, one really good thing that I've seen that has worked well is a lot of uh, institutions universities they do a chip sheet with all the scientists um, who are presenting newsworthy research from their from their uh, university, from their institution, and they write like a blurb on each, like a you know a couple paragraph, a paragraph blurb, and you know reporters like those and they look look at those and they try to you know any anything to help them figure out what they want to cover, or you know it may be worth um, pitching to a very specific reporter, giving them an exclusive on something that you. Um, on one of these stories, um, we have a who's coming list that's online that lists all the reporters who will be at the meeting. Um, so those are just some options um, uh, to keep in mind. So I guess just in summary, um, you know, a couple of do's and don'ts, you know, submit on time or before the deadline um, <laughs> would be great. Um, and like I said, feel free to reach out to us starting now to whenever um, about any questions you have or any ideas you have. Um, be specific as possible in what the results are that are going to be presented. Um, and think about what the story would be. Think about what the news story will be that will come out of this press conference. Um, good idea to talk to the scientists beforehand, or at least via email get a pretty extensive rundown of what exactly they will be presenting. Uh, and like we said, think, just think maybe outside climate, climate and planetary science. Of course, if you have something great in those areas, we want to hear about it. But um, you know, we reporters even ask us for things that are outside those areas. You know, there's so much climate, so much planetary science, which is wonderful. But is there some other kind of earth science story that that um, you might be able to pitch? Um, it's a little different. Um, think about diversity on your panels. Um, look at what we've done in past years, not only to see, you know, what we've accepted, but also, you know, to understand that if we did something last year on the exact same topic, that's a little niche, we probably won't do it again this year. Um, you know, for example, if we did something last year on atmospheric rivers, um, we probably won't do something again on atmospheric rivers, unless there's some huge new finding that just has to be, you know, done. But, um, you know, it, just to keep that in mind. And, Again, contact us. Let us know what you're thinking, and we'll be happy to, to you know, work with you on it. So, um, and just to keep in mind, you know, like I said before, don't pitch us research that's already been publicized or covered. Um, you know, if you're kind of unsure, even um, maybe it's not your scientist. Maybe you, ha you know, we're, we're reaching out to another scientist to be on your panel. Um, you know, just Google around, just try to figure it out. You know, there's been cases where, um, you know. It, you know, even scientists have said, oh, this wasn't publicized, and then we did the quick Google search, you know, and we saw that it actually was. I don't know how they didn't figure, you know, how they didn't know, but, you know, we saw that it actually had been, um, or at least, you know, widely enough that we wouldn't want to do a press conference. So, so just um, let us know about that. Um, don't promise the scientists that you're going to, you know, you can blame it on us that, that we don't accept all the pitches and that we don't, we don't do all, every press conference that's been proposed to us. Um, but don't promise anything. Um, you know, look at scientists from outside your institution that you might want to bring into your panel. Um, of course, ask us if we have any suggestions. Um, happy to provide those. And of course, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and again, you should all have these, but these are the links to the PIO abstract search that Lori went over, um, the press event proposal form, and of course, the deadline is Friday, September 28th. All right, I guess with that, we'll take some questions. Um, you can type your questions in the question box. Yep, in the question box or the chat box, whichever you prefer. Yeah, um, but I think we had, I mean, we can start with some that we, yeah. Okay. Um, this question is, what if I have breaking research, but the lead investigator on the project is not attending the meeting? Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> So there's a couple of options. So um, 
if if the person is not present is not attending the meeting, but you want them to participate in the press conference, we are able to bring people in to press conferences uh, via a phone, via Skype. So if they're available, we've done that before. Um, you know, that's that's one option. Um, another option is obviously to find someone else. Um, who is uh, who's presenting to to present the results? Um, another yeah, and another option that we've actually done is we've had people who they want who people want to be in the press conference were not coming to the meeting, um, but maybe we're local. You know what I mean? Like if they were local and they could come by the venue, we can get them in just to do the press conference. So that's not a problem. If you have someone like if you're here in based in DC and you have someone from your agency that you, you know, isn't planning to attend the meeting but they just want to come for that press conference so they can present at the press conference, that's not a problem. We can help you out with that. So there are options if the person's not gonna be there. Of course it's great if they are, but if they're they're not, you know, there's other options. Um Another thing too, I think Lauren mentioned, if if you only have if you have more people that you want to be on your press conference, then we can fit on the stage. I mean, we physically can only fit like four people on the stage, and it gets to be a lot of presentations if you have more than four. But um, we do this all the time is we have some people in the audience, so we have maybe a couple of scientists who are sitting in the front row, and we introduce them at the end of the um, of the panel to say these guys are available for Q and A. If the, the reporters can direct questions at them during the Q and A, and they can you know speak into the microphone to answer it. So that's another option if you have more people than than will fit on the panel that you want there as experts. Yeah. Is there an easy way to search for a previous press conference? Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, so basically you will just, if you go to, if you just Google like AGU fall meeting and then type in whatever year you're looking for, so you could do 2017 fall meeting, 2016, 2015, um, when you get to the fall meeting page, so all those pages still exist from all our previous meetings, um, on the right there will be a little menu and it should say information for media or it should say media center, and if you click on that, the first page that should come up, actually I can probably show you guys now, I'm going to um, end our slideshow here. Um, all right, hold on. I'll show you here. So if I go to AGU 2017 fall meeting, all right, and I click on that. Takes a second to load. All right. So if I scroll down and I go um, over here. On the right, it says Media Center. So I click on that. And then here's the fall meeting. So this is all the information for all of our, for all members of the media. So if you go to this tab right here that says Press Conferences, that shows you all the press conferences that we did last year at 20, our 2017 fall meeting. So here it has first like a little um, chart, like a schedule of all of them. And then down below is all the descriptions. So you can click on them too and you'll take you right to the description of each one, what the, you know, what the press conference is about, who the participants were, what sessions they were in. Um, you can do this for, you know, 2017 all the way back through, you know, however many years you want to go back and look. Um, but you can search through all of these. But, but there's no way to search them comprehensively. No, you can't yeah. search them all. You have to do them year by year individually, but yeah, yeah that's yeah. the easiest way to do it, I think. Um, and maybe we yeah. can send around the links to all to the, at least the past few years. Yeah, we can send you all links to the past couple of press conference pages. Yeah, yeah, sure. On the PIO search form results, is there a way to export those results to Excel? Unfortunately, not. So that whole system of the PIO search, I mean, is really an ad hoc system that we just create just for PIO. So it's it's really done very quickly just to get out the abstract for everyone. However. We do have that spreadsheet where all of that data came from. So if you want that, um, let us know, contact us, and we can get it for you. Or um, it's, a, it's a pretty big file, but I can get it to you, and that may help um, you to, you know, then you could like sort that by your people. Um, but we're happy to provide that if that's, if that's easier and you, you wish to do that. It's just such a big file. It's usually easier to do it through the search. But unfortunately, there is not a good way to, to download it to an Excel file. So. <laughs> Maybe that will change. We are getting a new website, so that might be a feature we can get next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what if my researchers say they want to submit to Science and Nature or another big journal? <laughs> good question. That's a very good question. Yes. So, it depends, I guess, on where they are in the submission process. If they have already submitted, 
we we routinely work with those big journals, science and nature specifically, to coordinate paper publication. So if it's already been submitted and there's a good chance it looks like it's going to be accepted, we can reach out to the people at the journal and coordinate the timing of the publication so that the publication comes out the same week as the meeting, and we'll do the press conference on the day that the embargo lifts. Now, if they say they, they think they're thinking about submitting or they're planning on submitting to Science and Nature, that's a little more uh, tricky. Um, I, I guess it really depends on, well, no, I mean, I think one thing to keep in mind, so if they think we're saying we're submitting to Science or Nature, um, so I don't want to do this press conference, you know, that's up to them. That's obviously their prerogative. It's their research. Yeah. Um, but it is good to, we do tell them to keep in mind that if they haven't submitted by the, you know, by the time of the meeting and they're still just thinking about it, um, you know, our meeting is open to the press. The press can go to any presentation. And there's a, you know, there's a chance that if we found it and we think it's newsworthy, that a reporter is going to find it and a reporter is going to think it's newsworthy and they're going to come to your presentation and they might report on it. Um, so in those cases, you know, if you haven't already submitted the paper, you know, think about it. maybe it's better that I do a press conference so I can, I'm sure you guys have handled this before with your researchers, maybe, you know, we can help shape the story. We can help you tell it so it's, you know, in your own words, and you're not caught off guard by a reporter, or, you know, in, after your presentation or something like that. So that's one way to approach it. Of course, in the end, it's obviously up to the scientists whether they want to do. I mean, I always tell them too to contact the journal, you know, to understand so they can they understand, you know, what can, they, what journals consider prior publication and what what don't. I mean, for for AGU journals, they can they can participate in a press conference and it will not affect their publication in an AGU journal. But not all journals are like that, I realize. But that's just so, if, if they do a thing in an AGU journal, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Um, but so I guess, you know, if there's anything they can present that maybe they won't be submitting in the paper, you know, that's another option. But it's really, you know, you know, talk to us. You know, we've worked with these journals a lot, and maybe we can figure out a solution. Um, you know, th that is always a tricky question that always comes up, though, even yeah. for us. So. Um, can you include things in the press conference that are not being presented? Yes, sure. yes. So I think I mentioned that um, we've done that before on reports that are coming out at the same time as the meeting. Um, we want to publicize all really good earth and space science research. So if it's not being presented, but it, it's related to earth and space science, let us know um, ahead of time, you know, when you're even just thinking about it, and maybe we can can work um, together to, to do a press conference about that. That doesn't, I don't think that should preclude um, preclude anyone from doing it. Of course, it has to be new, and it has to be newsworthy, and it has to be something we want to do, but um, we have done that before. Um, we've also had, you know, a big paper in, in, um, in one of our journals coming out that we ended up publicizing as a press conference at the meeting and did really well. Um, the people were at the meeting, they weren't necessarily presenting on that paper, but they were kind of presenting on related research. That's a good thing to keep in mind. You know, we do have 20 journals. I'm sure a lot of your scientists, you know, publish in our journals. If you know about a big paper in one of our AGU journals that's going to be coming out at the time of the meeting or, or even a couple months, you know, they've, they've submitted it, say, next month in September, um, and they're willing to hold it till the meeting or in October, and they're willing to hold it to me, let us know about it because we, we, we will publicize those too. Um, you know, we're looking on our own as well, but if, if you hear about that, we want to know about that as well. So that can make a really nice press conference too. Yeah. And actually, as an example, last year, and if you guys are still looking at your screens, um, last year we did this press conference here, Evolution of a New Pacific Island, May Unlock Secrets to Mars. Um, this, so these researchers actually, this was a case of that where that happened, where these researchers were actually had a session about this new island that developed in the Pacific. Um, but the session ended up being withdrawn and canceled. So they weren't presenting on it, but they were all going to be at the meeting, and we still did a press conference on it, and it did, it did really well. So you never know. Yeah, and that's also a good example of kind of um, a non-climate story. I mean, yeah. it has a planetary angle to it, obviously, but, um, you know, uh, uh, something that's a little different, a little quirky that might that might work for a press conference. Yeah. Okay, this is a quick one. Um, can you tell from the PIO search results if a presentation will be a poster or an oral presentation? No, that is a good question. No, not yet, because that has not been decided yet. So the fall meeting program committee, so all the scientists who organize the program, um, don't come, they meet in September, and that is when they decide, they schedule all the sessions, and that's when they decide um, what is a poster and what is an oral session. So at this point, it is not known. Um, some scientists, I think, uh, when they submit their abstracts, they can request, um, either like if they just want to do a poster. So you could ask your scientists, 
um, if they're doing, you know, they may have said, oh, I requested a poster, or I know this session is going to be a poster session. Um, I think one thing to keep in mind, which Laura may have mentioned, um, if it's a poster, we don't care. If it's newsworthy, we want to do a press conference. Just because it's yeah. a poster, I mean, like we said, the majority of stuff presented at the meeting are posters, um, and that doesn't make it any less newsworthy, in some cases more newsworthy. Um, you know, one thing we didn't mention, this is something also to keep in mind, um, if, if it's an oral presentation, there's some in, there are invited talks, and that means that the conveners of the session have invited people to give talks. A lot of times these are big names in the field, people who have just published research in that field, and a lot of times those are not going to be newsworthy because they've already been publicized or they've already been out there and they're not necessarily new. So it's just something to keep in mind, even if someone says, well, I was invited to present in this session, that might be to ask, oh, well, have you actually, is this new stuff you're actually presenting? So, um, so just if it's a poster, we don't know if it's a poster yet at this time. Um, we will soon, you know, after, kind of like right after you submit the pitches, um, but it shouldn't matter in our case. It doesn't, yeah, it does not matter to us. And a lot, yeah, and like Nancy said, a lot of those invited talks, they might be reviews of the late, you know, summarizing the latest in the field or summarizing the past, you know, X many years of research in this particular topic or this particular project. So they, just because it's oral doesn't necessarily mean that it's more newsworthy. So um, what if the research has been covered in a local paper in the last year, but it did not get wide coverage? I think that's fair game. I think that's good. I mean, if it's just in a local paper, I mean, if your local paper is like the New York Times, of course, that might be different, but obviously I think that's not really the question. If it's a local, real local paper um, and didn't receive national coverage, I think that's definitely fair game. And, and if it was like a year ago, that's long enough, I think, that people, you know, so I think that that's definitely fair game um, to at least pitch pitch it um, as something. But if they, and if they have, even better, though, if they have, if it was a year ago and they have some new results to go along with whatever was covered in that original story. But, yeah, if it, if it was just in the local paper and never got picked up beyond that. Um, that's also another thing to, to uh, you know, mention um, in general, you know, if a story is super, super local, that may not be the best fit for a press conference. Um, you know, if it's something about something iconic, you know, in a in an area like having to do with a national park or something iconic that that is in a state, you know, that everyone knows about, a landmark. yeah, a landmark. Um, of course, those are going to be great stories. But if it's very local, um, you know, most of our reporters report for like a national audience, um, and especially when we're here in D.C. So um, just something to keep in mind. If it's super local, it may not be the best fit, but let us know. You know, maybe we can craft something about something local and we can add on some other local things and we can make it into something else that's a bigger story. Um, but just something to keep in mind. But no, that would not necessarily preclude it, just publication in a local newspaper. Are there any specific topics that we're looking for? I think what we said just is, I mean, I think some of these earth science topics that are not climate related and not planetary science are good are good things to think about that we might be really interested in. Like I said, if there's something newsworthy there, of course, let us know. But, you know, um, kind of quirky stuff that, that is really more earth science, gee whiz stuff. Is, yeah. Is gee whiz. Um, there was a recent paper we had in one of our journals. Um, we didn't end up publicizing, but I saw, you know, got a lot of coverage. It was about, like, the amount of diamonds that could be in the, you know, deep down in the earth. Like, something like that. Like, that's a real, you know, hot, kind of an earth science story, but it's fun and, you know, I mean, well, right before Christmas, we've tried before to do some maybe Christmas theme type of stuff. I mean, I know it's a little cheesy, but something to keep in mind. Last year, we did something on um, music and geoscience, how geoscience has influenced music in the past. So, yeah, anything weird or quirky, or unusual is, is good for us. Yeah, yeah. And of course, and of course, there's like hot, you know, I think, think outside some of those, you know, just the general, the climate um, and, and planetary stuff to some of the real more earth science and geology stuff maybe um, i think there's there's definitely an interest that we've heard from reporters who, who want more of that so yeah. um it can be harder to find i mean i know we're, we're looking through stuff too and it can be harder to like find or see what the news is there but if there is anything in, in those areas um that you think might be good let us know um this is the last question if my institution has a new instrument is that newsworthy <laughs> Probably not, I would say. I mean, I think I think it depends what it is, and and, and if that instrument has been used, and if that instrument has been used to have get new results on something, 
Um, it depends. Like, um, you know, we've done workshops in the past on, on the new like NASA satellites, for example, that are like the newest um, ISAT satellite that went up. Um, we've done a workshop on that. But um, in terms of press conferences, I mean, if, if the new instrument is really cool or unusual or weird in some way, that might work. Um, but and if it's been used and there's like the first results from using that new instrument that um, maybe tell us something different that we didn't know before um, could maybe work. Yeah, but generally, um, th those might be more fall into the workshop realm if it's just, oh, we're unveiling this new thing that we have. Um, I think that also, you know, um, yeah, yeah, I think, it, I, I guess what I'm going to say, like I said, um, I, I'm not sure how newsworthy it would be. It would have to be see if there were actually new results to come out of that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, last, last call for questions. Any other questions? Last call. That's it. Address everything. Um, well, great. Well, of course, and again, like, you know, this doesn't have to be the end. Please reach out to us if you have any more questions, if you have an idea and you want to run it by us, you know, bounce some ideas off of us. We're always here. Um, yeah, don't hesitate to reach out. And we're going to record this. I mean, the webinar has been recorded. We're going to post it to the web, too, if you ever want to go back to it. Um, so thanks a lot. And we look forward to seeing your pitches. Bye. All right. Bye. Thanks, everyone.